So, having seen the unboxing of Black Dwarf and Ebony Maw, let's assemble them now. Okay, so the craziest thing just happened, right? I got in a fight with Captain America and I stole his shield and I threw it at him. And I'm... Oh, he's big now. I gotta go. Hang on. So the first thing I like to do is just start taking the pieces off. So I'm going to use um, these clippers. These are electronic clippers. They're flat edge, so you can get a really nice smooth cut on them uh, without leaving too much of the sprue still on the miniature. So I'm cutting his torso right now. Uh, probably the best place to start. It's nice and big. Now that I cut it, there's still a little bit, even with these uh, clippers, there's a little bit of the sprue left on the miniature. I like to use an X-Acto knife. Uh, I tend to use a, a really sharp one for this, and I just scratch uh, the surface of the miniature where the bits are. If you're not comfortable using an X-Acto, uh, I know Games Workshop makes a scraper tool that you can use instead. I've never tried them personally, but it's the same principle. You're just going to be scraping off any little bumps uh, that aren't part of the miniature that might make it hard to assemble. Now that we've done that, uh, let's just dry fit. Make sure that there's no, not too many big gaps, that we get the parts the way we want before we glue them and well, at that point it ends up being a little bit hard to uh, undo. So, for plastic miniatures, I like using Games Workshop plastic cement. I know a lot of people complain that it's expensive and whatnot, but I really like the little needle dropper. Um, there's a fair amount in it, and it really does melt the plastic and fuse it together. So, so now that we put a little bit of glue, we're going to close it and hold it really tight. Like I said, this plastic cement does fuse the plastic, so put a little bit of pressure it helps speed things up and just get them together. Now what's next? Alright, I'm going to clip off some of the other parts. And again, use the exacto to scrape off. bit of excess flash on this one. That's one thing I like about these models, especially uh, with small releases that Atomic Mass makes. Uh, you can afford, well, it's affordable to try to get everything in one shot as they come out, instead of having to get uh, tons of big box sets like some of the other games. And when you get the models in the first run, typically there's almost no flash on them, because the uh, the machines that they use to cast them haven't gotten used up and there's no gaps for more excess plastic to leak out of the, uh, the molds. So now that I've gotten the flash off, this is part of his chest. We're just going to glue it on. Looks like it leaves quite a bit of gap. I'm going to put a little bit more of the plastic cement just to make sure that it holds tightly. Good thing about plastic cement compared to super glue, my fingers aren't going to get stuck on here. Uh, many times working on, especially on pewter or lead miniatures back in the day, you're using super glue and all of a sudden the miniature is one with your hand. Alright, where next? I'm thinking arms. So yeah, making sure I know exactly which one goes together. Uh, and I'm just going to clip them all out. They're pretty obvious as which arms they are. Uh, unlike some of the smaller figures where it looks like a tip of a toothpick for the arm. 
All right. Get rid of some of the excess flash. That looks pretty good. And the other side. Nope. There we go. That's the right one. stuff we have to do the better. size of the torso of most of the regular sized figures for this game. I find sometimes when they put the uh, the attachments for the sprues on these angled pieces like this, uh, sometimes the X-Acto doesn't work too well. It ends up actually scraping the plastic. Sometimes just a, uh, a round file works a little bit better. Now for the uh, the bracer, it's pretty big, and it looks like it wants to actually kind of just unstick itself. So I'm going to use a clamp just to hold it down while I work on some of the other pieces. Now I'm going to cut out the uh, the massive legs. When I find flat pieces like this, I tend to prefer using one of these uh, micro files uh, just to make sure that I don't remove any excess plastic causing more gaps uh, when the model is assembled.
just a bit of glue again on the uh, the the pilot holes and a little bit on the sides. to his head. Gonna glue those little horns on his forehead first. These surprisingly fit very well together. Alright, so now it's the final assembly. So I'm gonna use a bit of what's called green stuff. It's a two-part putty epoxy um, it's what a lot of sculptors use to uh, actually sculpt the uh, the miniatures uh, you don't need a lot of this in this case because I'm just gonna make little cig what they call cigars out of them and shove them in the uh, the gaps now because this actually activates once you uh, you need it together uh, I like to get rid of that little piece in the middle where the yellow and the blue meet. Uh, a lot of times that bit is a lot harder and has already cured a bit. So just by getting rid of that you get a smoother consistency. If you can't find uh, stu this stuff named under green stuff where you are, it's also known as Nidadite. Um, I'll put links in the description for uh, where you can get some or links on Amazon. Uh, but yeah, I, I just twirl it around. It's pretty much like playing with uh, Play-Doh. Fold it over and once it's fully green, that's when uh, I start uh, actually applying it on the model. Alright, it looks like it's... Uh, enough. So what I do next is I rip out little tiny pieces and I roll them into uh, essentially a cigar shape. And I like to use these sculpting tools. You can use pretty much anything from popsicle sticks to uh, even uh, ear swabs if you get rid of the cotton at the tip um, or just your fingers. Uh, it is rather sticky so I tend to dip my fingers in a little bit of water. Uh, this also helps get rid of any potential fingerprints on it. Uh, just rubbing it in, uh, a bit of heat from your fingers as you rub it helps uh, smooth it out as well. point it was starting to stick and I could see my fingerprints in it. Now I'm going to dip the, uh, the sculpting tool and try to get into those crevices where my finger really can't get into uh, just to try to smooth it out with the model. You don't want to end up with a huge uh, 
basically a gap or a ridge where the model meets the uh, the putty. You want to smooth that out as thin as possible. Uh, the tool I was using at this point was a little bit too thick still, so I grabbed a smaller one, uh, dipping it in water and just really smoothing out the green stuff. And I keep going around the, the piece looking for any gaps that I can fill in with uh, the green stuff just to make it look like it's not a toy model and more of a natural creature with no cracks and crevices in it. It's funny, years ago when uh, Games Workshop started releasing plastic miniatures, I hated plastic miniatures. I was a purist, I wanted my pewter miniatures, uh, I figured they'd last longer, plastic would break. Nowadays, I can't even look at a, a metal miniature of any sort. Uh, getting the flashbacks of having to drill into the pieces to pin them together, and having the paint scrape right off. Plastic nowadays is way better than it used to be. It's way more detailed. You can actually achieve levels of detail that uh, back in the day, uh, even on metal miniatures, wasn't even a possibility. Now I can attach the arms. A little bit of glue for the shoulder pad first. Yeah, these needle tips for this glue come in real handy. All right, so attach that the right way. Nope, nope, I said the right way. Yeah, there we go. A little bit of pressure. <clears throat> now we can attach the other arm that's currently dry. As I work on these miniatures, as I, uh, I'm assembling them, I'm always thinking ahead of how to paint them. Should I be attaching all the pieces together right away? Should I leave some separate? Um, just keep that in mind whenever you're assembling your miniatures. And just like that, we've got a black dwarf fully assembled. Um, I'm not attaching him to the base yet. I like to prime my bases separately uh, so I can get as much of the detail in. Now we're going to work on Ebony Maw. 
a lot less pieces, a lot smaller. Again, pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm just going to cut all the pieces that I need out of the sprue. I'm actually going to leave the pieces, uh, those two pieces that are for attaching to the base off for now. Uh, I am contemplating making a custom display base form uh, with LEDs in it. We'll see how, uh, how that goes. So again, just like we did with uh, Black Dwarf, I'm scraping any of the bits where uh, the model was attached to the sprue just to make sure that they fit together as seamlessly as possible. So the head just popped in perfectly. Now we're going to do the arms. I like this model. It seemed they, they, they put a really big enough gap and a long enough peg for the arms. Um, they fit in perfectly and almost no holding needed uh, while the glue cures. Now for the second arm. All right, at this point, I was actually contemplating leaving him as is to paint the legs separately. Uh, but looking at the artwork, it doesn't seem like it's that many colors uh, to separate. Um, I can actually airbrush the whole thing black and then block out the certain color so I'm just gonna glue them together anyways and there we have an ebony maw Hope you enjoyed uh, seeing how we assemble the uh, the Black Dwarf and Ebony Maw miniatures. If you did, click like and subscribe so that you can be notified whenever we release more of these videos. Cheers. Have fun.